Dear participants, on behalf of the project team, I want to welcome you on this Vlier UAS talk. It's our first Vlier UAS talk and maybe also yours. And this means a new challenge for the project team. We will share our experiences in this digital environment, hoping that technology works well today. Digital technology was also the topic of our project. During the project, we learned about facilitators and barriers when implementing innovative technology. We started the project in January 2018, long before we could imagine that the biggest challenge in our project would be the pandemic. Nevertheless, we will show that our strong partnership and friendship made it possible to reach all the project goals within the extra year that we received from Vlier UAS. We will start with a short PowerPoint presentation. After that, Josephine, Olive, Alice and Abel will tell you something about the results and their experiences. At the end, there will be room for questions. Our project team from Rwanda and Belgium is as follows. Here you see at the University of Rwanda, we have Donatilla, um, Olive, Alice, and Josephine is from the King Faisal Hospital from Rwanda. And we also had Jean-Pierre. Jean-Pierre participated in the writing aspect. From the Artevelde University of Applied Sciences, Gent, there is Hilde and uh, myself, and then we also have Severin. Severin is our colleague from the International Office. Then from the University of Ghent, we have Professor Martin Falke, and we also have in the team Karel van Bert, who is the company manager, the IT company manager. Why did we this project? The background in Rwanda is, and not only in Rwanda, also in other low-income countries, there is a shortage of health professionals. There is a limited number of midwifery experts in teaching in clinical settings. There is a theory practice gap in maternal and child health care. And there is often an inconsistency of clinical expectations between the classroom and clinical practice settings. This portfolio that we used in the MedBook design was designed according to the continuous place learning competency model. This is a model that was conducted or the result of a PhD project. It's a model within six steps and each step is important to stimulate the learning cycle. And this um, model was designed during the PhD project you can find the PhD uh, with this link and you can find a movie with the learning cycle in this YouTube movie. Here you see a screenshot of the MedBook uh, tool, this ePortfolio tool. It is important to understand what we mean with the portfolio. It's really an instrument that's used at the workplace. It's a self-regulated learning tool. It is competency-based. The student receives an account from the MedBook company and it's the student who invites the mentor and the supervisor. Here is a view from the student. The blue one is the student. Then you see there is a training component with the curriculum and the competency framework. You have the objectives. Students have to write objectives and send it to their supervisors. We have the learning experiences. You have daily learning experience and students must reflect on those uh, experiences and ask for feedback uh, to the supervisors. Um, with our colleagues from Rwanda, we're used to um, used a paper-based portfolio and uh, this portfolio also consisted of reflective writings on learning experiences. And then we also have a component of evaluations, competency-based evaluation, and then also we have a logbook component and a portfolio. In this portfolio is like a, 
uh, container for documents, for profession, professionalization activities and so on. Here you see a view of print uh, from the mentors or the supervisors. Here you can see a supervisor. And then the supervisor has an overview of students and also of the assessments that need uh, to be validated and also the learning goals that need to be validated. You have a date and you have the action what to do. Then there is a third screen to show how it works for the logbook. Midwives have a lot of professional activities and they must uh, do a number of those activities during their, their internships. And so it's also the student who can add a certain activity and then you see the date and, and some uh, items, some criteria. So this was just to show what we are meaning and what we, what we were talking about when presenting the results. Here you see that our project uh, consisted of two parts. We really wanted to implement something practice-based educational design uh, activity, but also we wanted to combine this with research. And research is really in the idea of um, teachers and universities, schools, to design and implement evidence-based innovation in education. The, practice, the practical side of the project was a pilot project with training of students, mentors and supervisors. And then we piloted the MedBook tool within two hospitals, the King Faisal and the Muhima Hospital. I have to say that it was really a small pilot study. And then we conducted research. The objective of our research was to explore supervisors, mentors and students' perceptions on the use of clinical portfolio. This, on the one side, the paper-based portfolio that was implemented in Rwanda, and on the other side, the e-portfolio that was implemented in Ghent. And now I think that's important to go to the results. We decided not to present results in a PowerPoint presentation, you can read the results in the publications. We made three publications. One is already published, uh, open source publication. The second one will be published in May, within two weeks. And that's uh, in the proceedings uh, format. And the third one is still in a review process. You see some pictures from the research work and you see also the masks. So this is, uh, the last uh, December, November, December of last year. And then uh, the normal plan was that we would go to Rwanda to, for the final, uh, the final um, phase of research, but that was impossible. So Hilde and myself, we were in Ghent and the colleagues were very strong to organize a new plan um, that was possible. So they motivated their uh, managers and also the IT staff to work together and they organized three workshops. As you can see, they worked very hard and now I think that's the moment to ask the colleagues, Josephine, Olive, Alice and Abel, to present to you their experiences. And so Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me and uh, I'm very happy to share with you our experiences during the uh, e portfolio. <laughs> Sorry, I have put the camera so that you can see who I am, but I will switch it off um, on YouTube, of course. Um, the opportunity we had was that uh, uh, we, 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 we gained knowledge and competence on using the e-portfolio because it was the first, the, 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 the first case we had seen and we have really appreciated it because it has helped us to do the follow-up on students. Um, it has given us a voice and a choice whereby we can interact with um, 
with the students, we can interact with other midwives, be it nationally or internationally. It has really given us that voice and uh, we are able to run together by connecting and it gave us a good support, a good project-based running uh, because we could do the follow-up on students and we could do, we could get the feedback from students and the students also could get feedback from us. And it was very interactive. Um, it promoted our individual check-in and check-out because uh, we could really share that knowledge and do the corrections and the reflections and uh, we could really uh, feel that there was an alternative of assessing the students, which gives us competence. And uh, the skills we gained, we had not had it in any other way of communication because the communication improved very well. The portfolio process has contributed to that development of uh, uh, digital competence. And uh, the knowledge we gained is that uh, staff, nurses and midwives can capture their learning ideas. They can access their corrections of work. They can reflect on it. They can, uh, they keep it as a, a software which helps them for revision, for, for interacting with their fellow. They can share their goals, their set goals. They can share their skills and they can sh share their showcase. As you know, in midwifery, we use a lot of uh, showcases. Uh, when we are revising a case that happened, it gives us more knowledge and more skills to share the real case whereby we can uh, repeatedly do it several times and we get the feedback, the real feedback that helps us to know what have we achieved, uh, what are our gaps, how can we close our gaps, how can we make the trends of things that happened and then we look for a way or we look for the root causes and cross the gaps. Actually, we have gone as far as using it in our day-to-day -day activities because we are involved in accreditation whereby we do the, uh, the quality improvement projects. So we are able to, to share, to communicate using the, the digital portfolio which has really helped us to develop our soft skills. And um, we, we, we are able to, to teach the rest who are not involved in this uh, particular project. And uh, we, we, we share the knowledge and we create new lessons and deliver assignments to, their, to, to, the, to the staff constantly and quickly and easily using the, the, this portfolio. And uh, we are able to really check on our midwives. Uh, the barriers or the challenges we had is that uh, not every staff has a, 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 has a computer, of course. We, we have shortage of computers. They can't access them easily. Um, they are costly. We also have a shortage of uh, information technology staff, whereby when you have a problem at times, it is not solved as easy as or as soon as it arises. So those are the barriers we had. Um, we also had a, a problem of uh, infrastructure, whereby we cannot set the 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 projectors as we wish, but to tell you the truth, we have embraced this digital portfolio 
because it has really given us better opportunities to, to, to share and uh, to communicate. And uh, the running is much easier because you can access it anywhere you are. We have encouraged our midwives to buy their smartphones. So at least the group we are using in the mentorship, where we are using this portfolio more is in mentorship. We are now doing mentorship in more than 25 district hospitals. And every midwife at least can buy a smartphone and we are able to interact. On day to day, we get feedback from them, same as we give them feedback where we, we think they have, uh, they have gaps. Like now we are working with, um, with the Enabel project. This is an organization from Berigia. And uh, we are now able, we were able to do our baseline assessment. And we were able to identify that the, the, the baseline where we have started from, the gaps we had. And uh, in most of the district hospitals, they didn't have uh, the pathogram done in the World Health Organization standards. But now we are very happy that we have managed to put it to the international standard. And when we evaluated after three months, we were able to see that within that short time, we were able to cross the gap. So we are really very happy that we have come to know this tool. And uh, we promise you that we shall be using it and we are really encouraging each and every midwife at least to have the smartphone because it is more expensive to use the computer, but with a telephone, they can uh, get it. And we are now really giving them our, we are doing the continuous professional development points on this smartphone. So uh, I'm just trying to show you how far we have gone after knowing the digital portfolio. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yusufin. Very well done. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Then we um, want to do, listen to the voice of the teachers, the metropolitan department and the university. We have to apologize Donatina, who was coordinator of the project due to family, uh, family problems. But uh, Olive will uh, tell something about um, the future for the university, but also what was the effect on collaboration between students, um, school and hospital, also in other ways. And Olive is head of the midwifery department. Olive, it's up to you. Yeah. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Olive, you can tell. Yes, I was hearing Christopher want to say something. Yes, uh, thank you, Miki. I'm Olive Tengela, as I said, um, the head of the department at University of Rwanda. Uh, my colleagues are absent, as she was saying, but I can try to share experience with this clinical portfolio and also the collaboration between two midwifery departments from the side of Waltevelt Applied <coughs> Science University and the University of Rwanda. We had good collaboration through this uh, uh, grant written and the, this e-portfolio where we learned a lot and we find many uh, achievements from this. We used to have a paper-based portfolio where our students are using the clinical teaching and the clinical learning. And the, from the study she presented, we have benefit advantages of this paper-based portfolio and the, this e-portfolio. 
And we found that with this e-portfolio is stronger than that paper-based portfolio. If I can say there were, there, there were many quotes said by participants, both supervisors and students, but they are saying it is user-friendly, it enhanced the IT competencies, and it's easier for students and mentors and supervisors. This means this collaboration helped us to be inspired to move from paper-based to digital uh, e-portfolio. And it is uh, good also uh, to, as all worldwide, we are moving to digital era. With this e-portfolio, what I can say, it was a pilot study, but at the end, after publishing those papers and as well as the discriminating findings, we found this experience is really good and we shared it with our superiors, if I can say, like school. And the school dean appreciated this e-portfolio and he uh, asked us to <clears throat> publish uh, or to disseminate these findings and the, also this uh, achievement to mentors from health settings, also people who are administrative of CMHS. We had a workshop uh, with the administrative of school and the administrative of the college to share with them experience of using this e-portfolio and it was uh, successful because they appreciated and saying it has to be uh, incorporated in our e-learning platform. It was a journey because we are to have to collaborate as well with the, the MedBook company that one developed this e-portfolio and Miki helped us uh, to link these e-learning officers from our university with MedBook to share some experience, technology core experience because some of them for us, we don't know how to use it. And they had good meetings and they achieved uh, something to to make this e-portfolio to be customized in your, our URA or University of Rwanda e-learning platform we use to teach our, our students in the classroom. And they wanted to see if they have, they can find plugged in, to plug in in our e-learning platform for those part of clinical, using this e-clinical portfolio. We had workshops uh with those e-learning officer and those whom we call e-champion who help the departments to to teach online and they find that this e-portfolio is helpful is good to help students to learn uh, in a clinical setting where they will reflect on their daily journal reflective and they submit and the student and supervisors or mentors find Oh, it easily that one as a feedback. What I can say, we appreciated our administration appreciated, and also we are still on that journey or on customizing everything on our University of Rwanda e-learning platform. Thank you very much. I think if there's any other question or any clarification needed, I'm here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olive, and also to tell the uh, name of uh, Donatilla. Then we are going to Alice, and Alice uh, will answer the question if it's valuable to integrate research in a digital innovation project, as this was really very ambitious goal. Alice, it's up to you. Thank you, Mick, to give me the floor. Uh, I address my greetings to everybody. Uh, concerning your question about uh, if it was necessary to introduce research within this innovative project, I say yes, it was really very important to do the research because whatever we do, it, it should be based on 
evidence based. So uh, the time the project uh, began, we have um, a paper based portfolio at the School of Nursing and Midwifery. So we used to use those papers and the project when it comes, it brings uh, the digital or the technology. So it was very necessary to see the, uh, to look for the perceptions uh, among the end users about those two portfolio. So the, uh, the research was about uh, to assess or to explore the perceptions of mentors, mentors, I mean those working in the hospitals, those midwives working in the, in the hospitals, in the two selected hospitals, uh, supervisors, they are supervisors from, from University of Rwanda, especially from midwifery department and the perception for the student. So we have seen the perception for both mentors, supervisors and the student on the use of paper-based portfolio and also and on the use e portfolio. So after that, we we have collected the data uh, to see if, uh, which uh, preference the preference between the two portfolio and the results. The findings showed that um, e portfolio were more preferred than e paper based portfolio. Uh, so from those findings, uh, as my colleague ha have said, we decided uh, to embrace ePortfolio and uh, now we are in good progress because our IT people, they have said it is compatible uh, with our e-learning uh, e learning model, e-learning platform. And the good news um, that ePortfolio, it can be used offline. It was a challenge, among the challenge we have identified during our study. Of course, we have identified the benefit for both portfolio and the challenges. The challenges you have identified in ePortfolio was the internet problem. So the good news, uh, uh, the IT department have said that it can be used offline and also it can be used by using phone application. So I can say this uh, research was very important. Also, uh, uh, it is in line also with our government will, political will to uh, uh, to leave the paper, the the analog to digital. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alice. Um, then um, we are going to Abel. Um, here you see the school, and Abel was a very motivated student. Um, you see a picture of our students, and also uh, that our students are doing internships in Rwanda. They are laughing, they're all girls. And here you see on the right side, midwives, and in Rwanda there are a lot of male midwives. You don't have male midwives, almost no, but that's just a small story. But he couldn't be here today, and the voice of students is also important. So um, we, we have a small movie uh, from Abel. I can say that perception that I got through this medbook portfolio was that it helped me just to work hard because the moment I used to, to, to do what I've been doing throughout the whole day at the clinical placement site, I had used to write them and give them the my mentors and supervisors, then they give me feedback. So that one facilitated me just to work very hard so that I can achieve what I have come to do in the clinical placement. So also, uh, it just helped me to save because uh, for the case of money, I'm saying that because I used to use the internet bundles that I've been even using on my phone because it's very easy to use. 
to even I can not go back just to buy other internet bundles. So I use my own phone. So using devices, it's very easy. You can use it even the phone without just going to look for the for the computer. So also it helps in time saving. I'm saving because I used to type what I've been doing throughout the whole day where I was in the way just going back home. So I used to travel back home while I'm even writing what I've been doing. So that helped me just to save time. Uh, also, this portfolio helps to keep the documents for the wrong time without losing them. Because even though now I have graduated, but I go back and look what I've been doing how I was a student. So it is easy to file them compared to filing those paper based because sometimes they get lost or you don't get the enough space for filing them. Um, so also another thing is that it affected my learning through direct collaboration with my supervisors and teachers. We find that it is friendly to the supervisors and the students because we chat in a forum, then they give you feedback, and after giving you feedback, you also ask what you want. So it is easy in learning and teaching. Um, I think this can help be helpful to all students and the mentors and supervisors and teachers who want to use it. I think that is all. Thank you. I can say Mika, are you there? Oh, yes. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, I think that we have no time. Sorry, I muted for April because it was not so loud. Um, I think that we were good in time, 30 minutes. Um, we have time for questions and I hope that there will be a lot of questions that we inspire you. And I think that um, we will uh, see, depending on the question, who can answer it, who is the Olive or Ali, sorry, who can answer this. So please, I, Christoph, do you? Yes. Stop well, actually, share the actually there, was, there, was a, there was a first question actually from uh, Eric Ekesa. Uh, Eric, uh, are you there? Because he's interested also to, uh, to, to copy this program uh, for Kenya. So, Mika, yeah, you, have, you are invited to Kenya as well. Mr. Yes, Ekesa, are you there? There. Yeah. Please, shoot your question. Yeah, I wanted to know if the program can be enrolled back to Kenya. We are having a lot of problems here, many our mothers and our where our sisters are having different programs to get into hostels. So if I think you can roll this program here, it will be very, be very good for our people also to learn from the digital uh, modernization. So it would be very nice for me to, to be part of this, this research because I'm a researcher. I'll be very happy to enroll it when we come together as a team to manage the impact of the community-based jobs. I'll be very happy for that. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kesa. Uh, actually, uh, you should know that uh, Kenya is uh, also uh, an important co partner country for VLIRUS. Yes. So I invite you, uh, whenever we have a new call that will be launched very soon, uh, I invite you to submit a, a, a proposal. And of yeah. course, I also invite you then to contact uh, these colleagues uh, from uh, Belgium and possibly also the colleagues from Rwanda to set mm. up to define a uh, to formulate a, a good proposal but maybe uh, i would like to invite the colleagues then uh, yes. whether, whether, whether there's any possibility to work in uh, kenya yes yes that would be nice maybe i can give the floor to professor valke uh, to tell also something about the broader project and e-portfolio project um. okay uh, thank you for your question as to a possible implementation in kenya i think the example of this project clearly shows that it's not only the tools, the software that is important, but it's especially 
the embedding in the environment and the involvement of all these stakeholders. So that's why I really would say, listen to Christophe and really define a project. And then of course you can invite people from Rwanda and Belgium to be involved in the project, but there is something that has to be carefully done. So it's the local setting, the local stakeholders that are really important, not only at the start, but continuously. Because if you don't take in them into account, well, you will have a tool on your smartphone, but it will not be used in the end. The extremely nice dimension in this project is that the, the tool is not only uptaken now in view of the initial training of the midwifers, but also for professional development. But again, this also requires a careful embedding in the local policies and in fact approaches in the country. So I would say, yes, you can do it, but define a project, respect a little bit the, this critical embedding in the local context. And I really, I'm sure that you can build on the experience of the team that worked in Rwanda and, and collaborated with the Belgian partners. Thank you, Professor Valke. Uh, actually, uh, there's a lot of interest in your program, also from uh, our colleagues from Ethiopia. Also, yeah. Magdes uh, Gurara from Ethiopia is also very interested. So, Mika, you have a lot of work to do now. <laughs> well, that's a pleasure. No, the title of the project was also the, the launch of the International uh, Digital Midwifery Workplace Learning Network, the first step. And uh, really, we aim to set the second step. Um, and uh, I also really uh, believe that technology and digital technology is open to the world for everybody and it it's gives connections. Now we are involved in, um, in, a, in a research project. Uh, also, not only that's what I wanted to say, like our colleagues also told that it's not only for midwifery, but nursing, but in fact, in the broader research that now we are conducting uh, is for all the healthcare profession. And in the end, we aim to improve quality of education in order to improve quality of care. And that's also something that's very important. We are doing this for educating students, they become professionals and to give better care and uh, guarantee safe care for patients, clients, mothers, and children. But maybe that uh, Olive, Josephine, Ali, so we want to, to answer something or to add something on this? If not, if not, I can jump in and, and of course, to, to boost a little bit your collaboration, we could set up a kind of regional uh, meeting and then discuss with the mm -hmm. player how we can foster this a little bit to, well, guarantee dissemination of the experiences and offering you a good grounding of your local support. And again, I, I also emphasize of what Mika is saying, it's not only a focus on midwifery, we're really focus completely on health care in general, medical care in particular, and this from, uh, in fact, really people working in the community centers, health centers, up to the very pretty advanced, in fact, trainings of uh, surgeons and so on. So it's the full range, but please, I really repeat it, it's not simply the tool, it's really also the environment, all the stakeholders and your local setting that should be considered. So maybe Christoph, we can also discuss this kind of regional meeting uh, because we are talking now nearly always about it's all East Africa. Maybe we could foster that in view of a good submission of uh, embedded proposals. Sounds like music in my ears, definitely. Uh, actually, I would also like to uh, add on that and that in the fact that uh, you should know that uh, Lately, we're also working on with the sustainable development goals. And one of those goals, of course, is within our, within our projects is, of course, education, research, innovation. But also healthcare is also very crucial, uh, not only in Rwanda, not only in Kenya, but also in Ethiopia and actually all of our countries where we're active in, the 20 countries that we are active in. So uh, I got some more questions from Ethiopia. So I really invite the, our Ethiopian colleagues to check our website and also to check whether there are new calls and then they can they can uh, submit a proposal and as i invite them then as well also not only to to contact the, the the flemish partners but also the london partners as we have here 
So please feel free to also learn from each other. Uh, that's also one of the, 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 the crucial elements in our cooperation. But uh, I think uh, maybe the, the one, our, our Rwandan um, colleagues want to add on that. Uh, how did they manage? Because uh, it's, quite, it's not that easy, of course, I can imagine, uh, to, de to develop such a project, to, to implement it. So um, please, uh, if you have any uh, advice, uh, yes. any advice for our Ethiopian uh, colleagues and uh, our Kenyan colleagues, please share it with yes. us. Yes, uh, we made uh, them hard work. Eh? Olive, do you want to tell something? I just uh, start by saying that my colleague Hilde is not here, but she worked uh, and lived during four years as a midwife in Rwanda. She knows Rwanda very well. So that was also very uh, important and interesting that um, she, she knew the culture very well. And um, also that we knew each other. We started with a strong partnership. Um, and I think that that's also something that was uh, very important also for this project, that the, the aspect of culture is very important. So it's really important now, like Rwanda, eh, you see these are strong midwives that they can share it also for Africa and other developing countries. Olive. Uh, that you have to unmute. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you very much, Miki and colleagues. Yeah, as we are sharing our experience, we are very happy and glad to share good experience. It was a long journey and hard, I can say. And also, as she was saying, we met our colleague Hilda and we used to have uh, like eight years uh, partnership before with your university, but in the exchanging students only, they were coming here for clinical. But for that e-portfolio, it started when Hilde was uh, connecting us with the, the head of department, Miki, where we started to see how we can write a grant when the call of Vilos was out. And it, we wrote a grant. Donatilla and Miki were a promoter, but at the beginning I was with Hilde in touch because we are having students from your university. Uh, and since that time, we, we wrote that grant and succeeded. And from success, we had a, many experiences we can share, the delay of bureaucracy, the signatures, that the local commitment, as the Professor Falk was saying, and we tried our best to own the, 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 the project and work hard day and night from our side, and even sometimes comes to Arteveld to work on the project up to the starting implementation. And before starting implementation, we have done like a baseline study, if I can say, saying that we used to have paper-based portfolio. I think colleagues from Ethiopia and Kenya or this East African region, they have that paper-based portfolio. I've been in Uganda, they are having those paper-based portfolio. We are sharing same experience, but from that paper-based portfolio, even though it was helping us, we wanted to move from paper-based to digital. And the change is not easy. And implementing that technology in the, in the context where network is not easy, devices for supervisors, mentors, and the students, but also tried our best to share with the project. We bought some computers to the, to the centers. We were using two settings like a pilot study, Muhima and King Faisal. And the supervisors, research people, we were, uh, we were committed, if I can say, day and night to see how we are progressing. After that baseline study or baseline research of checking how paper-based worked, we implemented, we trained the mentors, supervisors, and the students to use this e-portfolio. And the colleagues from Belgium came to us, trained us, and we went to train also mentors and supervisors and the students as well to be on the same level and to have common understanding of this e-portfolio use. 
And we started uh, implementing it for some months because it was a project, it was a pilot, it was not taking like a whole year. And at the end of implementation of like three months, we evaluated and we went for the end line study, if I can say, to see the experience as well of ePortfolio. And we compared, it was very nice. I can share many experiences as the Professor Vark said, if we have that big meeting regionally, we can disseminate and share more information and how we thought we are committed <laughs> to see how we can succeed regionally. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, at least you want to add something? I have a question. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you also, Rif, uh, for uh, saying about our experience. What I, I, I can add, also it helped us to learn because we were not experts in research, in, especially in qualitative research, but now we learned a lot during this journal. And also we have uh, done publication and we hope other will be published soon. Also, uh, now uh, the e-portfolio uh, will not be implemented only in, at the school level. Uh, it will be implemented at the college level where uh, other, maybe other school, they, ha they have the component of clinical part, they can use it. That's why uh, I, I, I said it can, it can be used as the Professor Martin has said, it can be used in healthcare, not only in midwifery or in nursing, it can be used everywhere in healthcare. Thank you. Thank you. Josephine, do you want to add something? Thank you. <clears throat> I just want to emphasize on how we have really appreciated this uh, portfolio because we are, we are really now using it to do the follow-up on our on nurses and midwives who are doing mentorship uh, in the clinical practice. We are able to follow them up. We are able to give feedback and we are able to evaluate, to monitor and evaluate their competences, yeah? how they have gained the competences in the mentorship and the, we, we, we have uh, tried to share with all nurses and midwives who are in the clinical practice. Thank you. Something what I was thinking, we had also some meetings at the Belgian embassy. Do you want something to tell about that, um, Olive? How they did the follow-up? Follow-up about? about the project, we went to the Belgian embassy and they came to the university. Ah, those are, that Jana was saying, there were many activities done during this journey of the project. We had networking with international midwives and conferences. We make a follow-up, we went to present this project to the embassy of Belgium and they appreciated and also they came to our school. We presented what we have done and what we are doing. It was in the, big, uh, in the mid term, that period. And we presented all we have done from the first year and they appreciated, even they said, we can uh, scale up this project, uh, this e-portfolio to other professionals. We are discussing, it can go to other professionals. Also, uh, they appreciated the Johan and the who, I don't remember. And also Inge came, we presented this so far where we were that time. Uh, all of them, they appreciated how the project was learning for both sides, for financial activities and everything. It was successful. Yes, maybe also the critical point from the embassy was the question of sustainability. And that is yeah. like now... Sustainability. Uh, yeah, just that. yeah, and that's also thanks to, to COVID. Uh, you organized a workshop to discuss the IT stuff, uh, like yeah. you mentioned. 
And that is really something to be addressed in the long time, because now in May, the second one is piloted, the one of the university, I think. So that's also a cycle that will go on and see how this will work in Rwanda. And um, we continue the journey. Yeah, thank you, Miki, for reminding that for the sustainability. Even the beginning, they were asking about members together with you when we are here. And even at the time they come to school, they ask the sustainability. It's the reason why we started thinking about how this can be incorporated in your, our e-learning platform. We used to teach on, uh, online and it has been enhanced during this lockdown. COVID also has, has made us to increase the online teaching. And the, this e-portfolio also helped us to see how it can help with this uh, period of like a pandemic of COVID that can help. For the sustainability is the reason why we have had that workshops to advocate also to see with those e-learning officers how it can be customized in our UR e-learning platform. I think with this way, it will be sustainable. Thank you. Professor Valte, yes. Yes, I just want to jump to some of the questions that were raised in the chat box. So there were very quite a lot of questions about, is this applicable to other professions or other curricula? We, our experience is already very wide. We go beyond the medical and the health profession. It's also already used in many other training programs and professional development programs, such as teacher education. And I think teacher education is also a very uh, strong field in, in Africa, where a lot of needs are being addressed. The same in bio engineering, engineering, veterinary education. Uh, the only key condition is, of course, that this e-portfolio builds on a competency-based orientation. And of course, if your local curriculum does not reflect such a competency-based orientation, well, this should be added, in fact, to the project definition if you want to go ahead. Remember that in the discussion of our Rwandese uh, colleagues that they emphasized the strong responsibility also of students in the process where they collect proofs to add to the competency definitions in the e-portfolio. Now adding proofs is a kind of conceptual shift in many educators in programs that they say okay the responsibility for evaluation is partly in the hands of our students and we accept and we respect this proof being presented by our students as a good base for reflection and a discussion about the mastery. Of course, this new approach in assessment is part of this competency-based orientation in the new curricula. So if you ask us, can you do it in other professions, in other curricula, we always say yes, but then you should respect this condition at the level of this competency-based orientation and the shared responsibility between the institution, the professional setting like the hospital and the students in collecting evidence as to the mastery of the competences and using this evidence as the base for a discussion about, are you okay as a midwife, for instance, midwife? are you okay as a nurse, are you okay as a bioengineer? So please, we can talk about that, but it's more than simply the tool or the IT system. Okay. The only other thing I want to address and sometimes is also uh, already in the chat box is about the technology. What I like about this is the, the choice for lean technology. So the smartphone is really a good tool. It's easy to use. It's accessible to most people and it works. Okay, And in view of sustainability and dissemination, we also stress this, go for lean solutions. They are more sustainable and they are better, better in disseminating. Uh, of course, connecting to your own system and your online learning system, as Olive and colleagues are stressing, that's yes, you can do it. But remember, people are working in the field. They are working in a hospital and they have to be able to rely on these easy accessible tools too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Priso, I think that we are almost at the end of the... Yeah, uh, yeah. well, first I, I would like to refer to what Olive said, and uh, she mentioned the fact that it wasn't easy. 
to evolve from a paper-based work to electronic work. And actually, that's also a learning, a learning curve for us as well. As you can see, there are many Michaela Stubers here in the group. Uh, mm -hmm. That is due to Zoom uh, elements that we, that we do not control yet. Uh, so, that, 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 so first of all, I would like to uh, thank the people who, di who did uh, ask their questions in the, in, the, in, the, in the chat box. Martin, as always, a busy bee, tried to, uh, to, to, to answer them. Um, but I also saw some, some, sometimes uh, some uh, uh, hands raised uh, by, me, by uh, Michaela. So I don't know what Michaela that was. So mm -hmm. please uh, do raise your hand again. So that we can show that, that sort of, yeah yeah there it is there it is yes uh, oh there are even two <laughs> <laughs> so, yes let's let's first let's try let's uh, take first the, the first Michaela please uh, unmute yourself and then we'll see uh, who can take the floor first please do so please one of the Michaelas who just raised their hands yeah. so the idea the idea is that you you can change your name by right clicking on your name within the participants list, and then you can write the exact name. So, uh... Ooh, that sounds very far. Well, apparently the Michaelis are not really interested. Yes, now they are muted. Uh, yes. Please, go ahead. I think well, my... Not. First the lady, Let's, ladies first. <laughs> okay, thank you. Right, sorry, uh, sorry. my name is Pauline. Um... I'm from Kenya, but I'm currently based in the UK. Um, I think uh, I got interested in this topic because um, I wanted to like, kind of ask this question, which I felt maybe I should ask before you end the, the, the talk. Uh, based on the evidence, um, most uh, midwives in, uh, in, Africa, in African setup, they're lacking the digital skills, or rather the digital skills are in, at infancy. So, because you are trying to establish kind of the, if, um, what's it called, the digital platform. How are you prepared to tackle the, the fact that majority, let's say, I'm talking about my, my own village, majority, they've not gone to school. How are you going to, to tackle that to, like, let's say, um, how can I, I'm looking for a good term to use. Okay, because if you target only those who have gone to school, that means you leave out those illiterate ones. So how are you prepared to to come to that challenge? Oh, yeah, Leif, is, that, is that something that you can answer? I can try if I have understood well. She's asking because there are some villages mm -hmm. where there are people who don't even uh, click, who don't know how to click on the computer, those digital skills. Yeah, but he, here we started by faculty and students at university. They are using computers, they are using smartphone, they are learning from what we call e-learning platform Moodle. For them, they are, they are skilled, if I can say. Uh, those who are in the village, they are not there because we are here in the town. But for those midwives we took, they are mentors from her setting or hospital who are teaching our students in, 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 in health facilities. They are graduate from schools. They are graduate from university. Those ones are teaching our students, even though they are midwives from ho uh, hospitals. Is, is, it was starting from this side. And uh, I don't know if I catch well what uh, she's, Pauline she's saying, for midwives, we say they are those educated ones, even though they are having low skills in the digital, those can be learned. Like we are having uh, computer skills modules at university. They can be learned, if I can say. But for, for those whom targeted in our project, they are for two settings, Muhima, and King Faisal and the University of Rwanda, where we are, all of those ones, they are skilled, they are graduate, they are competent midwives with the, with the degrees. Thank you. I just would like to take it because we only have one, one minute left. So uh, 
Mr. Am Amboso, I'm, so I'm sorry for, for earlier, but uh, ladies first as usual. So please, the floor is yours now. So, uh, also... Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Yes, my name is Duncan Amboso. I am in Rwanda, but I'm a Kenyan. I've been following this discussion and I must say it's very uh, good discussion. Having worked in the communities in Rwanda here, my concern would be what is the game plan in terms of uh, making sure this e-portfolio actually reaches the villages of Rwanda? And is there a way, I had uh, one of the presenters say we have to use uh, smart devices. Is there a way we can still use these small telephones to track data and you know send data without necessarily being online because of you know internet problems. Uh, this is a good concept. Uh, just concerned that it should go, it should move out of Kigali and go to the deepest of villages in Rwanda and actually spread in the whole of East Africa. Uh, that is my input. I'm a prospective student that. Uh, Belgium, Cape Leuven, and I'm happy to join this discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, we will work, we will continue. I think this um, audience showed that there is a lot of interest and that um, it's something that we, we will continue our journey, that I'm sure, is sure you can always contact us and we will give help where possible and look for new proposals and we can also count uh, like the MedBook, um, the manager is here also, the audience is, uh, he is also uh, all, um, interested of want to give help for pilot projects or so if you want to. So, Thank you so much. Thank you Mieke, even Pauline admitted it was a good discussion so thank you Hello. all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Uh, I think uh, this is the end. We came to an end. Yeah. I would like to thank all of you, uh, especially the organizers, Miki in particular, but also uh, Martin and also the, 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 the colleagues from uh, Rwanda. Uh, as I said, uh, as, as I put in the, the chat box, uh, we have many community talks like this. Uh, this was uh, one about uh, Rwanda. We try to organize it on a monthly basis. And I think next month, uh, in the end of uh, May, we always try to do the, the last Wednesday of May, uh, it will be whether Indonesia, whether uh, Kenya, that will be on the list. Um, we're still working on it. So uh, we invite you all. If you have questions, please do not uh, hesitate to contact us uh, through our website. Uh, you can find all the details. And we will also post the movies that we just, uh, the, the discussions that we just have. We, also, we will also post them on, on that same uh, website. Thank you, everybody. Uh, if, I, if I forgot something, I invite my colleagues to, to interfere, but I think... All no, I, I just want to finish that. because this is also at the end of our project. Yeah, it's right. Really very nice. Uh, also a nice opportunity. And um, um, I would like to thank all the Lirios, but also all the colleagues and everybody who was involved in the project. Also the stewards, mentors, supervisors, everybody. And what I learned from Donatina, who is not here, from the beginning, she said, we are one team. And I think that's the thing that I learned, that when you work together and, um, and keep in touch, collaborate, yes, we are one team, we did it. I'm very happy uh, the colleagues came friends, we came friends, and uh, I'm very happy that we had the opportunity to present our experiences in this interactive way. Also, Christophe, thank you for your input <laughs> to skip the PowerPoint and ask questions. <laughs>